Okay, everybody. This is Kay from Rainbow Parents Facebook page. And um, today we're going to talk about coming out stories. You know, still um, people think that they're a, a little corny, a little cliche, a little, you know, like why do people care? Um, but in, in our community, coming out stories are a big deal. There, there are connection to who we really are and they allow people or help people understand why we are who we are at this moment in our life. You know, we, we don't all share the same coming out story, but we all share that first emotion of what's going to happen. We all know what that feels like. We can all connect with that one energy and, and relate. <laughs> you know, if, if whether things went great or things went horrible, we all understand what it took to get you to initiate that first conversation. We all knew what it takes to sit at the table across from your, your loved ones to put your business in the street. <laughs> Right? We knew we know what that feels like. So no, it's not it's not corny to us. And we share that that connection. And that's how we get through and that's how we help each other, you know. We we sit and we watch each other's, you know, videos or listen to each other's podcasts because we we want to hear what happens after that fork in a row, after that that emotion that we all share, which way did you go? Um, you know, for me, my, I have, you know, I have several stories, like most of us, right? I, I have, you know, stories with my, my friends or stories with my parents and other family members. And they're all very different. They also share that same <laughs> initial, oh my gosh, why do I have to do this? You know, um, some really, really good ones and some downright horrible ones. Um, you know, and sometimes, like in my case, your, your coming out story is just straight up jacked from you your opportunity to have this this moment was taken and it was taken out of anger and you know that moment I will never get that moment back and um that's really hard sometimes as as you know, as, as long ago as I was, because, you know, I'm 43, so it's like, you know, I should, you know, be able to say whatever. But some, you know, sometimes I can, but then other times it's like, yo, man, like, that was for me to do. You know, if someone was going to dismiss me, let me have said what I needed to say. Right? So what had happened was <laughs> my um, brother was living with, with me and my girlfriend at the time. And we were pretty serious. We had just, just bought, finished buying a house. Um, we were pretty serious and he 
just was being my little brother, you know, um, and, and, you know, and I'm trying to, you know, trying to tell him things, okay, well, I need you to clean up, or I need you to do this, I need you to do that, and it was, and it was, and it got to the point where it was like I was taking sides or, or whatever, and I'm like, no, I mean, I'm not going to put anybody over my, my, my family, but, you know, I need you to, to like pull your weight around here. And he felt some type of way about that. I mean, it was my house. But anyway. And he went to my parents and started kicking my back in. And telling them everything. Oh, Let me this girl. She's got me brainwashed and blah, blah. I mean, just, just like, just putting everything out on the street didn't even tell me didn't even have the you know the decency to tell me that he was going to just dive me out to my parents and you know that was really hard like when my sister called me and told me like yo he's over here <clears throat> telling all your business and I was like yo that's messed up that's messed up. Really messed up. Still get pretty angry about that. But that was a long time ago. And there's nothing I could do to fix that. Um, so it got really rough between me and my parents. And my mom, she always was very, you know, loving, very close to me. She would do anything, you know, to try to be near me or whatever. Um, but it got to the point where I really had, I had to sneak around to see my mother. Um, he told me, my father told me I couldn't come around anymore. That, you know, basically I was dead. Um, he tried to bring a bunch of him and, and church people over to the house. I guess they was going to, you know, pray me out the house or something. I don't know. But um, I didn't let them in. I let them stay outside. Y'all want to jump and shout and, and throw pieces of the Bible in my driveway? Have at it. But you weren't going to come up in my house and act crazy no and I also was afraid I was afraid that he would probably physically hurt me because he was angry my father was very angry and he was going to drag me out of the house by any means necessary and bring me home. And I was scared. And I did not let them in my house. My mother wasn't a part of it. She stayed. She stayed wherever she was. Um he had, you know, said some really horrible, horrible things, and it was just it just got really nasty you know a, a parent a father that I thought would care about me no matter what disowned me in a matter of seconds like I was nothing You know, being in, in, in church all my life was like, did any of that mean anything? <laughs> and it still stings as, as much as I'm over a lot of it, it is very hard because you know, I grew up in church 
and I didn't see any other life but for my kids but them having the same life I did you know and sit next to the church mothers and eating church candy and going to Sunday school and having plays in church and homecoming and all the, the way I grew up you know to now be an outcast like you can't come here at all so when I would visit my mom, I would have to call her and she would meet me at a park so that she could see me. But you know, you can't come in here because your father will be upset. I have um, four children now and he has not wanted to see any of them. They don't exist either. And it's very difficult to tell, to explain to, the, to your kids why they have not seen a relative, why they've never come around. No, coming out stories are not whack and corny because this made me who I am right now. This made me grow up more than living with my parents and reaching 21 years old and being, you know, <laughs> Thinking that I was going to have them to grow up as a woman with and having a resource that you're supposed to have in your parents. I was on my own. Alone. Nobody. They changed the locks on the house. Told me I couldn't be anywhere near my nephew I was absolutely nobody anymore house that I grew up in I hadn't seen the inside until my father died it's like Ten years later. Yeah. That's what happens with homophobia. No, but let's let's see what it is because it ain't homophobia, because phobia means you're afraid. He wasn't afraid of me. He hated me. He hated me. There's no fear involved at all. Mm -mm. No, these people aren't afraid of gay people. They hate gay people. That's what it is. It tears families apart. So, I decided to write a letter and address it to my father and basically you know just letting him know everything coming out myself and you know basically and just telling him you know everything I ever wanted in life was to have a family that I was important to Having my, my, you know, people that love me and cared about me. And God gave me that in my wife and my four kids.
So I mailed it. And my mom called me. And she told me she read it. And she didn't give it to him because she thought it would break his heart. And I was like, here we go again. Somebody jacking my moment. <laughs> like, okay whatever but at least my mother knew <laughs> for sure right she knew from the horse's mouth this time but for some reason you know she still tried to to be connected with me but she was still very much afraid and concerned about the relationship between her and my father. He was very emotionally abusive. Um, so my mother had her own issues and battles that she was dealing with at home, which really made it hard for her to have anything left to deal with what I was dealing with with him. And for that, I... I understand and I empathize with her on that um there are times I'm still still a little angry at you know that she didn't stick up for me enough but it is what it is but you know she's gone now so And there's nothing I could do about it. But at least I know that she knew. Um, she has met all my kids. But it still should not have been like this. You know, my kids are worth more than being hidden. Worth way more. You know, and you know, me and my brother, our relationship is pretty much done. I mean, he will never ever understand what he did, and it's not the fact that he, me and my dad may not may have still fallen out at that moment. That's not a point. The point is that you did it out of anger and out of hate. You cared absolutely nothing for me at that moment to do something like that. Because at least if I had to done it myself, It would have been easy for me to walk away with my head up and still feeling <coughs> feeling like, you know, I had some control over my next move. It's hard to move forward when you still have weights. You know, um, but I had some good coming out stories, but I don't think those really, it didn't really change me at all. Um, but they did give me the real support that I needed and it let me know who I really had in my corner when I really, at that moment, didn't have any blood family at all. None at all. 
And, you know, just when I thought that, you know, that was the bottom of the barrel. Um, you know, I had to move. I moved. You know, I was living far away at that time. I didn't have anybody. So I'm like, why am I going to stay around here? So when I was in, um, I moved to another state. And I was living by myself. And my landlord, he was... He was trying to hit on me for a couple times. He was extra nice and things like that. And, you know, I was, um, like, my girlfriend would come over and different things like that. And um, he just straight out asked me one day, you know, um, are you, you know, can we go out sometimes? And I was like, mm, no, I'm, you know, I'm seeing somebody. And he was like, oh, okay. And, but he kept trying, kept trying. And then later, you know, he found out that the girl that had been coming over was um, my girlfriend. And he was not having that like he really started to change and he took my rent check and it's the moment he cashed it he filed to have me removed and kept my security deposit so not only <laughs> And I mean, I was really, I was young, you know, at that time I was, we had, I had just broken up over my brother's situation, broke up with, with the, um, the other person I was with. And, and I was like, okay, now what? So I had to get out of this place. I had nothing waiting for my next paycheck because he took my two months and my other rent and you know and to like a 23 year old like what now so i had to get out and i was homeless okay i was homeless for a couple months until i could find a place it was it was the most terrifying time of my entire life. My entire life. I mean, you're talking about somebody who I was a preacher's kid and everything was good. I've traveled the world. I've done so many things. And I'm homeless now. the hell and of course at that moment I'm really really thinking that maybe it is maybe I am wrong maybe something is bad you know what I mean maybe God is really just out for me right now it's not like I wasn't working like I had to go and and after work, work odd shifts just so that I didn't couldn't didn't have to sleep outside at night. If I couldn't find a motel room to go to sleep and and get cleaned up so I can go back to work, it was horrible. And I couldn't go to my parents. I didn't have anybody. But one day. I needed my hair braided. And God put this person in my life that changed everything. Everything. 
I went over, my, a friend introduced me to this person and she was like, no, I'll just, I'll do it, I'll do it or whatever. So I went over to her house and after work, I still had my uniform on because I, I didn't get a chance to go to the hotel room yet so I can get changed and everything. And she braided my hair we was just sitting there talking. I'd never met them before. Never. And her mom was there. Her other sister was there. And and I had, you know, I was like, do you mind if I just get ready for work real quick? Because, you know, she just finished my hair or whatever. So she let me get showered and cleaned up and I can go, you know, go to wherever I was going. Um, and I just thought, oh, you know, she was like, just come back tomorrow, you know, you can, you know, like, you're so nice, and this, so we started to kind of visit, I would, you know, come over, just hang out, and, and then one day, her mom was just sitting there talking to me, and she was like, okay, now tell me what's really going on. Yeah, I was like, what are you talking about? She was like, no. Tell me what's really going on. And it was, it broke me in half. That this woman who didn't know me. Could see that. I needed something. Man, I didn't think there was any more good in this world. I had tried to take my own life more than once. But this woman who did not know me from anything. took me in and they are still my family to this day <sighs> and I love them dearly But that changed so much in my life, that that moment. Again, you know, we all have these, these moments that are just up and down. You never know you, where life is going to take you when these things come out of nowhere. And I wasn't ready for that one. An absolute stranger showing me more love and compassion than my own flesh and blood. Hmm. Yeah, so. Our stories aren't corny. Stories aren't just regular, whatever, just somebody else saying something. No. It's the reason why I am the way I am right now and who I am right now. Because when I needed God the most, he was there for me. Despite everybody telling me that he was not. That he didn't care about me. He sent 
somebody who I never met in my life to put a roof over my head. So I'm telling you, all of this, because I want you to know that your story is important. It's important to me. And it's important to thousands of other people who need to know that what they went through matters. Right? You are not alone because we know what it feels like to be alone. And it's not because we did anything, right? I didn't commit a crime, right? I didn't commit a crime. People tell me, and I grew up learning, blood is thicker than water. No, it ain't. Because the friends that God has blessed me with are my friends family for real for real like they are the aunts and the uncles to my children the grandparents to my kids the real church home to my family So, there it is. We all have different stories, but we all share that connection of that moment to what, of, of what do we do? Who do we talk to? How are they going to take it? We all know what that emotion feels like. But your stories are important. It's not just what we understand at that moment, uh, the, the connection that's important. Your journey is important because who you are is important. Your story made you who you are. And no, who you sleep with did not make who you are. It's the journey, it's the things that you had to go through to be able to make your life yours. No, me being married to a woman did not make me who I am. It's everything that I've been through. And the love that I have learned to accept. And the rejection that I have learned to dismiss. That's what made me. And that's why, you know, I do this page, this Rainbow Parents page, because you know what? We have families, that are broken all over. But are we really broken when we can really connect and, and through our understanding of what we've been through and the love that and energy that we can just send to one another?
Let's listen more. Listen to each other's stories more. Because it's in the empathy, in that space, is where you learn to accept people for who they are. To love people a little bit more. We all need that more anyway. There's not enough love going around at all right now. There's so much hate, not fear. There ain't no fear going around. Nobody's afraid of gay people, afraid of Muslims, afraid of brown people. They hate them. That's the word of the day. It's just plain old hate. And there ain't no way to sugarcoat it and make it look pretty. It's hate. That's it. It tore my family apart. And it's torn thousands and thousands of more families apart. Hate. So I really hope that you hearing my story will help you with your own journey or if you know somebody who is just having a tough time with theirs that you share it um and share yours with me i would i would love to to hear what you went through good or bad because it's important and the more we support each other, the easier it will be for us to move through life, get through our depression and get through our emptiness and rejection and all of those things. We'll be better parents, right? If we felt less empty, Let's work towards feeling more whole. Okay. Love you guys. And I will talk to you another time. Good night.